Hey all, I'm Paul Reese, an engineer with the developer relations team on Google ML. And this is the ML on Raspberry Pi with MediaPipe series, where you will learn about the basics of machine learning, along with how you can use Google's newest on-device machine learning tool, MediaPipe, to add useful features to your own Raspberry Pi apps. In this video, we're gonna take a look at object detection, which is one of the most commonly used computer vision tasks for edge devices. We'll start by learning some of the theory behind computer vision, then see how you can create your own Raspberry Pi Python app using a media pipe for object detection. So let's go ahead and get started. The term object detection is a little misleading since we're not actually focused on detecting something, but rather we're interested in knowing where that thing is in the image. This task is made up of three separate steps. The first is what we would typically think of for detection, where the model looks at an image and it attempts to determine if an object even exists within that picture through statistical analysis. If we were to take the name object detection more literally, then this is where we would stop, but I guess we're not really that lucky. The second step is classification, like you may have seen in the previous video in this series, where a model attempts to associate a label with a given image. And since this is one of those foundational concepts that's worth knowing a little bit more about, let's take a second to look at how computer vision classification actually happens. With a single label classification model, this image of a cat will likely appear as cat since it is the most pronounced item in the image. However, if you use a model for multiple labels, then you might see cat, rug, or toy as possible labels. Regardless of the number of output labels, the main way a computer vision classification model approaches this job is to look for patterns within images during training and then look for those same patterns in new images. Getting back to the cat image, if we say that we have thousands of cat pictures, then we might be able to start noticing trends in things like ear shape, eye shape, and nose shape. Now, if we take those patterns and look at a brand new image, we should be able to identify those items, or at least most of them, so the model can say that there is a cat with some level of confidence. The next thing to know is that this recognition happens across multiple layers of an image. For example, you may have an RGB, YUV, or BGR image, but if the model expects images in the RGB format and you're using YUV, then you will need to convert the image to match what the model expects. Once the image data is in the expected format, the model will look at each layer of color to try and perform classification with various patterns noticeable across those different layers. Getting back to the process of object detection, the last step is called localization. This is where the model determines where a recognized object is in the image in order to generate bounding boxes. The other thing to know about object detection is that it can be incredibly difficult to get great results when using a custom model so you'll wanna keep an eye out for edge cases that may need to be addressed when you're given a model. Some of these cases include overlapping objects, different rotations and sizes for objects compared to the training data, or only partial objects existing within an image. We'll actually take a more detailed look into this process when training a new model with MediaPipe Model Maker over in the next video. But here you can see a simple example of those edge cases with an annotated image of blocks for a children's toy that I recently built for this video series. Each of the five pegs are meant to hold one to five block pieces, and there are five different shapes and colors representing the numbers one through five. For this example, we'll look at individual pieces to classify them while also predicting their location in a live camera feed. What's nice about this demo is that it allows us to work through how you can use a new custom model, such as one for identifying blocks, completely on your Raspberry Pi for object detection, once you've done that step, you can always expand on what you've learned by doing something with that information, like creating a new robotic arm that specifically places blocks on their correct pillar. While this isn't anything too fancy, it was something that I had fun with, so I'm hoping you all enjoy it too. If this is something that you would like to see more of in our video series, or if there are any particular kinds of projects you would like to see as either a video or a written guide, definitely let us know in the comments because I do look at those after these videos have been published to see what questions people have, what I can do to improve in the future, and see what sorts of content people enjoy the most. Before you get started, you will need to set up your Raspberry Pi. The most important thing to know is that you must run a 64-bit operating system on the device. In this case, I'm gonna use a standard 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS 
on a Raspberry Pi 4B. You will also need a camera hooked up to your Raspberry Pi, though you can use either the Pi Ribbon camera or a USB webcam. The next thing you will need to do is make sure you have the media pipe dependency installed on your Raspberry Pi. You can do that with this command from the terminal. And since this is all on-device machine learning, you are gonna need your machine learning model already stored on your device before it can be used. There's a variety of ways you can do this, including using this wget command from the terminal, as you can see here, to retrieve an already tested stock model. Though I'm gonna simply place my own custom model in the same directory as my Python script. If you do wanna try out one of the default media pipe detection models, you can find a list of them and their links in the developer documentation that I'll link in the video's description. Now that the housekeeping is done, it's time to create your new Python program to do object detection. While I'm only gonna cover the really high level important parts here, you can find an entire example covering object detection on the Raspberry Pi on GitHub, which I'll link to below. That example also includes a variety of utilities that are useful as you start to play with this task, including drawing utilities for displaying the bounding boxes around your newly detected objects. First, there's a couple imports that you will need at the top of your program. After you have those, you can initialize your object detector with a set of configuration option objects. The first options object contains a few general properties that are available to all of the tasks under MediaPipe. In this example, you will need the path for the model that you're using. The second object contains properties that are relevant to the current specific task. Some of the available options include the max number of results that you want to receive from the detector, the minimum confidence score that must be met before a result is returned, and a callback that will receive the results from object detection. In this case, you'll also use the live stream running mode because this is gonna use the camera to constantly detect against a video stream. After you have your options objects configured the way that you would like for your app, you can create the detector object that will do the majority of the ML work for you. Next, you'll get an image frame from the camera and do some pre-processing on it, including converting the image to the red, green, and blue format that the machine learning model requires, as well as create a new media pipe image object that will be used for inference. If you've watched the intro video to this series, then all of this should look fairly familiar to you. Because MediaPipe uses the same patterns across tasks to make it easy to add different machine learning features quickly based off of what you've already learned. With all of that out of the way, you can call the detect async method on the detector with that MediaPipe image and a timestamp, which will return the detection result to your callback function. Finally, this callback will receive a result object, which you can use to do whatever it is your goals are with your new Raspberry Pi app. In this slide, you can see how you'd retrieve the bounding box, object name, and detection confidence score from the result object. And to hopefully make navigating the result object a bit easier, this graphic shows what data you can expect to receive back from the object detector, as well as how it relates to an example image highlighting two different dogs in a single picture. Now, when I run this sample with the custom model that I mentioned earlier, you can see how each individual block has a bounding box drawn around it, a label for what kind of block the model thinks it sees, and a confidence score for seeing it. In the next video, I'm gonna cover exactly how I made the model that you see here. That way you can start creating your own custom object detection prototyping models for your projects. We're excited to see all the cool things you make with MediaPipe on the Raspberry Pi especially since I just particularly love the IoT space. So let us know in the comments what you've made or what you want to make, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.